a secret cove. Beautiful beachfront resorts. From a sanctuary of faith to a hidden tropical lagoon. To exploring hidden caves and chambers. All of that in one episode here in Kalubian Leyte. Hey guys, PD here, Alden here, and welcome to a new episode here on Now in PH. Guys, today we're headed to the northernmost tip of Leyte Island, the town of Kalubian. Guys, for the first time, we're gonna explore some caves. Cave. We heard that like 80 plus ka caves dito sa Kalubian. Uy, caving. Uban mo no? Tara, let's go! Coming from the capital, Tacoma City, it's a uh, two hours and twenty minutes nga road trip. Oi, as first timers, something you expect when you saw Kalubian, Cabo. Ah, may mga white sand beaches na dito. White sand beaches na dito. Kita mo si Tony. Colons. Hey guys, we're in Villabano. Uh, we have a quick stop. Okay? We just picked up Miss Vanda Sanaria Gonzalez. She is a district liaison officer of the 3rd District of Leyte under Congressman Jean Veloso. Hi, Miss Vanda. Upon arrival in Kalubian, we went straight to the town hall to meet Mayor Marciano Batanciela Jr. Welcome to Kalubian Lady. Experience our natural wonders from our caves and waterfalls to our beautiful beaches. Kalubian is a fourth class municipality in the northernmost tip of Leyte Island. Kalubian has 53 barangays with a population of over 31,000 people. The name Kalubian was derived from the Visayan word lubi, which means coconut in English, as the town is abundant with coconut trees. The town hall is perched on top of a hill overlooking Biliran Strait. We're here in Coco Palms Resort, uh, located in Barangay Abanilia, Kalubian later. And this is our jump off point because we're about to take a boat ride going to a secret cove and locals dub it as Little Palawan. Tara, tara! The jump off point to Moises Beach is Coco Palms Resort. From there, we took a 45-minute boat ride. Somehow, it was a gloomy weather, but it did not spoil the trip because of the picturesque views around. Guys, this is Moises Beach, uh, located in Barangay Hubay, Kalubian Leyte. So, from town proper, uh, it will take you a 45 minute boat ride. And locals actually call this place as Little Palawan. As you can see, it resembles the rock formation of Palawan. Moises Beach is a secluded cove only accessible by boats that can bring you straight to the shore. Locals dub it as Mini Palawan because of its pebble-white beach, scenic rock formations, and turquoise blue waters. 
we had a quick stop in one of the several small beach coves separated by towering rocks. The sea is rich in marine wildlife, ideal for snorkeling. It is surrounded by lush, tropical greenery. It truly felt like we had a beach to ourselves because there was no one else around. The place has no tourists, it's isolated, and it's ideal for reconnecting oneself back to nature. We're here in Bob's Beach Resort. From the town proper, it's about a 30 minute ride. And it's lunch time, so klaro na kayo, alams na kayo, favorite part na ko. Tara, let's eat! After Moises Beach, we went to Bob's Beach Resort for our lunch. It's a small resort with a private beach with native cottages and a room for overnight stay. You can rent the entire resort exclusively, perfect for family and Barcada Beach weekend getaway. After lunch, we went back to our big boat, but because the tide is low, we had to ride a smaller boat to tender us. One of the most popular religious sites in Eastern Visayas is the St. Therese of the Child Jesus Diocesan Shrine, and we were privileged to meet its founder, Dr. Ray Martinez. Uh, I'm not a religious uh, man because uh, I was uh, organizing beauty pageant for 18 years. So, parang uh, ang dating sa akin, chicks boy. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in the uh, year 2000, when the relic uh, came to the Philippines for the first time from Lisieux, somebody had called me up, uh, four people, that the, the, the relic, relic of, of St. Therese uh, is in Cebu, and a certain uh, Mark uh, Zaldoa had called me up, Nur, asamang ka, niyang relic sa St. Therese 3? Kisa ba na ba? Um... Uh, uh, include me in, my, in your prayers. Parang uh, I, I was intrigued. So uh, I took that flight uh, that day, that night. I was able to take the flight. Uh, pumila kami. Nung mag-alas 7 na, mag-alas 7 na ng ano, maaraw na, I, I told my wife na alis na lang tayo. Now, a friend of mine who is a uh, Colonel, uh, nakita niya ako, and then nyur din magagikan. Uh, alas kwatro kami naglinya diha, nagpila dyan. Siya pala ang in charge sa air transportation. He is a uh, community relations uh, officer of uh, Philippine Air Force. And, and then siya yung facilitate. Siya, balik tayo doon. So, bumalik kami. Sumunod lang kami sa kanya. Hindi ka na kami nagpila. That was the moment when Dr. Martinez first saw the relic of St. Therese. One day, when he was at the airport waiting for his flight, somebody gave a pamphlet of St. Therese. Somebody gave me this uh, pamphlet. Don't say the plan, wala ka namang magawa. Hanap-hanap ka nang mabasa. So, I uh, had that, you know, the, 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 the pamphlet. And then, there was a... Uh, a little, a little uh, story, a little uh, uh, biography of, of, of Saint Therese. Uh, that uh, she's from the Shu, and then there was a miraculous invocation prayer that uh, I will, I can uh, never forget and always uh, uh, back to my mind. Uh, yung uh, I will fulfill your plea to be made known everywhere. And I will never stop to lead others to Jesus through you. That particular message started his lifelong devotion to Saint Therese. 
that also inspired Dr. Martinez to build a chapel dedicated for the saint. He was planning to build a simple and cheap structures, but then... Ayaw, take the hickey. Okay, ako mag nga, mag ko, wag ka nang nabag na, lubi. Ayaw, take the hickey, akang ginoo. Kayo, okay, imong tihik-tihikan ang ginoo, take the hickey, kasap. Through the aid of generous people like Congressman Ching Veloso, the place became a beautiful sanctuary of faith on top of the hill. It was then declared by the bishop as a diocesan shrine of St. Therese, the first in Asia. After a long day, we went back to Coco Palms Resort for our dinner and had a quick edits and planning for our activities for tomorrow. Hello everyone, I'm Julian Batiancela. Welcome to Coco Palm Resort. Hey guys, good morning. So this is the room where we stayed for the night. Uh, first, not a private balcony over here. Uh, actually, this is fronting the pool area. Ta, so ta. Um, of course, the room is fully air conditioned. And we have a queen size bed, um, an extra bed, a tulong microphone, and of course, essentials, cabinet, table, and over there, sa CR. Coco Palms Resort is popular because of its big swimming pool for kids and adults. It's the top resort for event venues because of their spacious function hall. They have rooms with comfortable beds for overnight stay. And it's an ideal choice for staycation. They also have puddle boards, kayaks, and a floating cottage. Day two, and we're heading to our breakfast. Yep, bro. <laughs> After breakfast, we're going to some caves for some spelunking. All right. We started our day with a brutal fight breakfast, together with the experienced team of mountaineers who will join us in our hiking and caving adventure for today. Guys, we're on our way to the cave. Inaksan ang cave, right? Yep, inaksan. And guys, we have here our official tour guide, si Sir Julius. He is a mountaineer. Hi, sir. Hello. Sir, na kaya question, sir. Kami na may question. Ano sa may mga kwan sir mga top tour, top three nga dos and dos nato sa cave. Um, ang ato yung uh, paling kamutan yun nga mapro maprotektaran nato ang uh, Mother Nature. So uh, sa nana kana ng pagbili ng pasura gi bawal ginana mo. Then uh, uh, safety pinanglan na. Uh, Dili pwede mo sulod sa cave nga wala kay headlamp, mm. sapatos o helmet. And then kung unsay uh, instruction o kung sa guide, mo mm. giyatong sundon. It was a sunny morning and we started the hike from St. Therese Shrine. Sir, mga sir, ang singa na to sir. Ay sir, sir. San Isidro. Ikaw sir. Janix. Janix. Kaya nakapila ka oras ato hike patong dito sa ginaksanan, di ba? Ginaksanan. Una sundon. Uh, one hour trip. One hour. The hike indeed lasted for an hour and the trail was gradually ascending. We had a quick rest stop to quench our thirst. After a few minutes, it started pouring until we finally saw the mouth of the first cave that hasn't been explored for almost a decade. Release, 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 release
After an hour of hiking guys, we have to miss our opening in the Ginaxana Cave. No, bro, you saw that one. Para makawan, makanaok ka nito ang mga safety gears and equipment. Ang tawag ni Is Belay. Nakuha ni Singbin dito. Singbin nato. Paitawo ni Singbin. Original Singbin ba? Original Singbin. It's called Ginaxanan Cave because it's derived from the Bisayan word embrace, from the stalactites and stalagmites that resembles an embracing king and queen. It's also a nesting area for swiftlets, locally known as Balinsasayaw. Don't enter this cave without experienced guides and safety equipment because it's dangerous. Guys, morning entrance sa Corona ng Bulawan Cave. From the moment we set foot inside Corona ng Bulawan Cave, we were astonished by the sparkling golden stalactites and stalagmites. It seemed that Mother Nature blew of gold powder scattered all over the place to preserve its natural state. Please avoid touching it. We took a dip in Busay Daku's secluded lagoon, the best way to cool down and freshen up from our long, exhausting trek. Kalubian is an underrated destination worth visiting. It indeed caught us by surprise, and this is a trip we won't forget. A final reminder, leave no trace. Leave nothing but footprints. Take nothing but photos. Kill nothing but time. Guys, thank you so much for watching our Kalubi Anlite episode. Comment below if you have any suggestions for our next trip here on Now in PH. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss our weekly episodes of our Now in PH travel series. We'll see you on the other side, guys. Peace.